I think about trust, I imagine a person falling backwards into the arms of others. And just out of curiosity, how many of you have done something like this? Just raise a hand. More than half of you, looks like. Awesome. I also think about someone who's being helped to do something difficult, maybe even dangerous, like this person at the edge of Victoria Falls. Now, I think that the two people featured in these photographs share a number of things in common. At the moment that these photos were taken, I think that each person was feeling vulnerable, maybe even a little scared. I also think that each person had an expectation that others were acting to keep them safe, and that when this was all over, everything would be okay. Well, that syncs up pretty well with how trust is defined in the psychological literature. Denise Rousseau and her colleagues define trust as a psychological state comprising the intention to accept vulnerability based upon positive expectations of the intentions or behavior of another. That's a mouthful. Another way to think about it is, trust is the expectation that other people's future actions will safeguard our interests. Trust is a critical ingredient to a successful, high-functioning community. It affects how we approach our personal relationships. It's important for our economy. When trust is high, business can be conducted more cost-effectively and efficiently. And it's central to our democracy. Each time we vote, we're sharing a significant portion of our personal political power with those who we expect to represent our interests. As a social psychologist, the concept of trust has interested me for a long time. And as someone who asks questions for a living, I knew that I could design a research study that would help us to better understand what trust looks like here in Central Ohio. And that's how I found myself on my path to the Columbus Trust Study, which I'll tell you more about in a moment. Now, one of the first researchers to study trust was a Cornell University professor named Morris Rosenberg. In 1956, he created a set of questions that measured what he called faith in people. A few years later, a national study called the General Social Survey took some of those questions and began asking them of representative samples of Americans. Here's one of those questions. Generally speaking, would you say that most people can be trusted or that you can't be too careful in dealing with people? Now, this question has been asked about every two years since 1972. And unfortunately, the long-term trend over time does not look good. In the early 70s, about half of Americans said most people can be trusted, a percentage that's declined to less than a third in 2016. And if you look at research from other research organizations like Gallup, you'll see a similar story. Over a similar time period, fewer Americans have trust or confidence in our political leaders. Fewer Americans have trust or confidence in mass media's ability to collect and communicate information and fewer Americans have trust or confidence in one another when it comes to making important political decisions. About two years ago, my colleague Brian Haviland and I were talking about these national trends and the declining notion of trust, and we wondered, what does trust look like here in Central Ohio? To what extent do we have faith in people? So my research firm, his marketing firm, we partnered together, we launched the Columbus Trust Study. Earlier this year, we randomly sampled thousands of households from across Franklin County. Over the summer, we sent them multiple mailings, inviting them to participate in the survey, which they could do either online or by completing a hard copy of a survey questionnaire that we had mailed to their home. And here's what we found. Overall, we see that nearly half of the people in our community say most people can be trusted, a percentage that's significantly greater than what we see either across the nation or across the Midwest. We also saw that trust was related to some important demographic variables, like education. Those with more formal education were more likely to say most people can be trusted. We also saw a gender effect. Males were more likely than females to say most people can be trusted. I know, right? <laughs> trust me, it's the research, right? <laughs> In addition to looking at what trust looked like across the community, I was also curious about what it might look like within the community, neighborhood to neighborhood, zip code to zip code. So we mapped our data. This map here shows you the major zip code areas around the county. The areas that are shaded in a dark blue are areas where a greater percentage of the people in our survey said most people can be trusted. And the areas that are shaded more lightly or white are areas in which 
a fewer percentage, a smaller percentage of people said most people can be trusted. And as you can see, trust is not distributed equally around our community. Now, whether you look at education or gender or even where you live, it's clear that your life experience plays an important role in determining how or whether you trust. Diving into all the socioeconomic factors that could lead to trust could probably be its own TED Talk. But today, considering that we live in what seems to be in an increasingly divided society, I'd like to focus on one other aspect of the Columbus Trust Study that has me really excited because I think it has the potential to help us move forward as a community in the right direction. And I'm talking about the link that we see between trust and community engagement. In our study, we saw that the majority of people who said most people can be trusted also report volunteering some of their time in a typical month with a nonprofit, civic, or religious organization. What's more, we see that those people who say most people can be trusted also volunteer more of their time in a typical month compared to those who say you can't be too careful. Now, our data don't let us say that more trust leads to more volunteering or more volunteering leads to more trust. It's possible that both of those interpretations are correct. As a matter of fact, if you go back and look at what Robert Putnam wrote in his popular book, Bowling Alone, he said that social trust, honesty, and civic engagement, they're all mutually reinforcing. And I think he's right. For me, the key takeaway here is that if we were to act in ways that either increase our general positive view of others or increase our engagement with the community, other positive outcomes are likely to result. We know that trust is born when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable to others who we expect to protect our interests. However, we've seen that not everyone is sharing in the same level of trust around the community. And across the nation, it seems that we're becoming more and more closed off from one another. So what can we possibly do to build trust? Some clues to that answer might lie in the academic research literature on this topic. Researchers who study trust in laboratory settings often use a method called the trust game. And this game involves two people exchanging money back and forth, so there's some real world stakes here. And what they found is that people who play this game more frequently with one another are more likely to show trusting behaviors with one another. This is probably because they're increasing the amount of information they have about how other people are likely to act in the future. And that lets them better predict the future. To paraphrase Ernest Hemingway, the best way to find out if you can trust somebody is to trust them. Being vulnerable with positive expectations is a critical, necessary condition for the creation of trust. So I'd like to challenge you to share more of your time, effort, and expertise with people in the community who are unfamiliar to you, yet who share similar goals or interests. And when you're faced by a situation that asks for you to become vulnerable to someone else, to take that risk. In addition to building a stronger community, you may find yourself trusting others a little bit more. Thank you.